India's Defense Ministry is making a switch with their operating systems that can connect to the internet. They're tossing out the Microsoft operating system they've been using and transitioning to a new OS called Maya. Maya, which is an Ubuntu-based OS, was actually developed by Indian government agencies in just six months. And that's impressive to be honest. Right now, they're rolling out this Maya OS in the Defense Ministry's computers. However, it's not being used in the Navy, Army, or Air Force systems just yet. The Navy seems to be on board with Maya, but the Army and Air Force are still checking it out to see if it fits their needs. Maya is all about beefing up security. They're aiming to protect against those malware attacks that can wreak havoc on critical systems and government agencies. To do that, they're introducing a protection system called Chak Review. It's like a shield for Maya. They're even adding Chak Review to all the computers that have Maya installed. But here's the real question, how effective is Maya? And what sets it apart from the good old Microsoft Windows? Ubuntu is built on Linux, which has a different way of doing software stuff compared to Windows. With Linux, they have this whole setup where normal things and super important things are kept separate using strict rules. This makes it way trickier for bad stuff, like viruses to get into the important parts and cause havoc. Although, Windows has improved its user privilege model, but in the past, some older versions of Windows made it super easy for bad stuff to take over the system. Malware used weaknesses in the Windows operating system to target specific files and system processes. And even nowadays, some tricky malware can still cause a ruckus with the powers they have. In Linux, users generally do not have administrative privileges by default. They need to explicitly grant elevated privileges using commands like sudo, reducing the risk of unauthorized system changes. This whole idea is like, even if a virus sneaks into your account, it might not be able to mess up the whole system. Ubuntu does things differently when it comes to software. It uses a centralized package management system. Software in Linux repositories goes through review processes and is often digitally signed to ensure authenticity. The package manager checks signatures before installation, reducing the risk of tampered or malicious software. Linux repositories offer specific versions of software. Users can choose the version they want, knowing it has passed quality assurance. Linux uses package management systems like apt or DNF. These systems handle software installation, dependencies, updates, and removal. They ensure that software is properly integrated into the system and that dependencies are satisfied. Windows does have software repositories, like the Microsoft Store, but people often grab software from all over the place. That's like rolling the dice. On what you're downloading, it might not always be the good stuff. Windows software distribution is more decentralized and less standardized. Windows software is often distributed as installer executable files exe. Installing software might involve granting various permissions. Malicious software can potentially be disguised as legitimate applications, leading users to unintentionally install malware. Dr. Chen, recalculate the new thruster data and relay it to Blue Oyster called Immediately Instantia. Okay, roger that, Doctor. What's wrong? Seriously, you auto-updating now? General, I won't be able to calculate the right data for the satellite for 49 minutes. How long till impact? 11 minutes and 44 seconds. Microsoft! Both Ubuntu and Windows operating systems often receive regular updates that include security patches, bug fixes, and new features. 
Some updates might require a system reboot, and during this time, the system might be temporarily unavailable. In a critical situation like in defense, applying updates without proper planning could potentially disrupt the operation of the defense system. However, Linux systems generally allow for more flexibility in scheduling updates, and some updates can be applied without requiring a full system reboot. Being open source, Ubuntu benefits from a large community of developers who review the code, identify vulnerabilities, and contribute to fixing them. They're like the neighborhood watch, finding and fixing problems. Windows is not open source, so its code is not as accessible for review by the broader community. Security vulnerabilities might take longer to identify and fix. While no system is immune to attacks, Ubuntu and Linux distributions are often less targeted by malware due to their smaller market share. Cybercriminals often focus on Windows due to its popularity, making Linux systems less attractive targets. Now, about Chack Review, it's a shield for the Maya operating system, kind of like what Windows Defender does, but it's custom made for the Indian Armed Forces. Think of it as security, that's tailor-made to fit their style and needs. This special system could have some cool features just for them, to protect sensitive military and government data, which might differ from the typical data protection needs of civilian systems. Because this system is made for the military, it's likely that the government is keeping a close watch on it to make sure everything is done correctly. And because it's made in India, it's got that local touch, which could result in a more localized and focused approach to security. Switching to Linux would be a lengthy process due to several factors. Firstly, there's the need for training and getting people familiar with the new system. Secondly, there could be problems with compatibility for important tasks that might not run smoothly on Linux. Additionally, defense systems often depend on specific hardware setups, and ensuring that these hardware pieces work well with Linux might be tricky. Moreover, the switch would also involve addressing security concerns. While Linux is seen as more secure than Windows, a change would demand careful security evaluations and adjustments to make sure the new setup is well protected from potential threats. All these factors combined would make the transition a gradual and complex endeavor, taking many years.